All right, today we are going to learn how to fold a banjo shirt for tie-dye. It'll look something similar to this when it's all done as a front and back pattern. First thing we'll do is make sure we have what we need. I've got here a shirt, t-shirt. This is actually for an order. I'm just going to go ahead and video this so that you can see the process. So that's soaked in soda ash and the shirt is wet right now. I just wring it out in the washing machine. I turn my cold water off and I turn it to a cold cold and I spin it out, not all the way, but to where it's spinning pretty fast. So it's still damp, but not sopping wet and you didn't wring it out. So there's no stretch in other places in the shirt. So there's that. We've got a half circle. This is to make the body of the banjo. This is made out of mylar. A ruler to draw the head and the neck. A washable marker. This is Rose Art. They wash out real well. They don't leave any kind of staining. Cotton twine. And of course, rubber bands. I have three different sizes here. I do a lot of tie-dye, so it's just easier that way rather than having to twist the rubber band so they're smaller. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Take the shirt, lay it out. Lay it out flat here. Find the point about halfway in between the neckline and the shoulder seam. I've actually had drawn a line earlier, but I went ahead and just marked it off. And then find a place down at the bottom hem. I come in about seven inches or so off that edge, seven to eight inches, to allow for that part of the banjo. Okay, then you grab both those points and bring the shirt up and kind of just shake it down, I say and then just flop it down on the table. What you wanna make sure of is that nothing is buckled up. Remember, this is a front and back pattern, so you want it to line up and not be bunched up anywhere. You just slide your hand along that edge. You know, if you feel that the other side's a little far back, you can just take the top layer and pull it back a little bit and usually get there. So that's that. Go ahead and draw the headstock on. On an adult shirt, I usually do the head about four inches. Go ahead and draw that in. And I go ahead and draw the her body. And I just kind of eyeball it, you know, and just eyeball and see where I think the length of the neck would look good. And draw that in. And then take your ruler and connect the two. I always make this line a little thinner up here and then wider down here. So at sort of an angle, like that. Okay. Now I go ahead and fold this part of the banjo. I try to make these what I call low folds, not real thick. This is going to be a little fine line that goes around here, and you don't want it to go really wide. So the thinner or lower the fold, the cleaner the line is going to be when you dye it. Okay, so you've got that. We go ahead and tie that section off using the cotton twine. I don't use rubber bands to fold the patterns themselves. I just feel like you're not gonna get the detail if detail is what you want. All right, so I tie right along that line, kind of get that real kind of snug there, not so tight that you're gonna break the string. Cut that off there. Okay, now we're gonna fold the head stock and the neck, just it's gonna be one fold. So you just start right at the top and just Fold along the line that you've drawn. 
turn the corners. Again, you want to keep those low folds so that you can get a nice line around there and it doesn't bleed out real bad on you. Okay, you fold that up to about where you tied off the bottom part. Bring all that back. Tie that off right along that line. Try to get it, you know, right on, as well on the line as you can. Just gonna make it easier to dye it. Snip that off. And I always put a second string across the whole thing. Again, gaining as trying to gain as much detail as I can. Just tie that whole thing off. Get her kind of snug. Okay. And I just kind of flatten it down, you know, to where it's sort of even across and not bowed or anything. And then I hold on to this with my finger so that none of these folds can pull out on me. So I've got my fingers pressed down pretty tight while I pull this all out. And again, you wanna keep the folds low. It's gonna be easier for the die to, to get through there, to go down. Otherwise, it's gonna to try to go out on you. Okay. We start with a rubber band. Start with a smaller one up here. It's not as wide as this part of the shirt. And I'm constantly fixing these folds as I put rubber bands on. Just so that I can have some uniformity going down the shirt. I'm using a bigger rubber band here. On this whole section, I'll, that's what I'll use is the green ones. You don't want this to be too tight because, see, I've got it pretty flat here. You don't want it to be too tight because when you pick it up, it's going to bow and that's going to be a nightmare. But you want it to be too rounded because you'll end up with a lot of white. It's right there. A lot of times when I've got a piece here that's fairly, you know, thin in width. I'll just get me some nice clean folds going on there and then I'll just bring it around. So run it into the rubber band, just like that. And I've gone back to the blue rubber bands. This is a thinner part. There you have it. That's the folded banjo. See how well you can see that. Head, neck, body. There's the other side. We'll dye it next. <laughs>